What's cracking, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. New video. Uh, the last video took five days, man. The one I just did, uh, the not prison tamales, tamales. That one took five days for YouTube to clear. Um, this one is going to be different, man. This one is uh, <clears throat> Valuetainment, one of my favorite channels on YouTube. And um, I don't know. I don't know if his stuff's copyrighted. We're going to find out right now. But it says, best days of my life. Andrew Tate shares his experiences in jail. This is interesting for me because myself, having been in prison um, or in jails the majority of my life, to have someone be successful in life, be a multimillionaire, be incarcerated um, for, you know, whatever. I mean, it seems like the charges are trumped up against him. Uh, whatever, that's for the, the courts to decide. But to see somebody uh, this late in life incarcerated, having the things that he has, the lifestyle he's used to, I'm interested to see what he has to say. So let's get it. And jail as a whole, I mean, there's so many stories I can tell. There's so many different ways I, I remember it. There were times I laughed. I will sit and say some of the best days of my life were in jail. Get out of here. Yeah. And some of the worst days of my life were in jail. Some of the best days of his life were in jail and some of the worst. Obviously, um, we can agree that some of the worst would obviously be in jail. Uh, again, a multimillionaire getting snatched up, feeling as if, um, like he says, the Matrix, whatever, right, was against him. But uh, Patrick was was shocked when he said some of his best, right? And um, I can get it. Uh, it took me a lot longer than him, but that's because I had a criminal mindset, right? He doesn't. So prison can give you clarity if you're open to it. Um, Andrew Tate seems like someone who is constantly working on uh, his uh, inner growth, um, his mental growth, uh, maybe even spiritual. I don't know. But prison gives you that time because it, it, you're by yourself or you're, you know, I don't know how the jails are there. Um, but it gives you time to reflect a whole lot of it. And it gives you time to get to know who you are, find out what you like and what you don't like about yourself. Most of the time, criminals don't like a lot about themselves. This guy seems confident enough to where he likes himself a lot more, but I can get it. I, I guarantee you he found some things about himself, and that's what he meant by the best days. Who knows? But there were days when me and Tristan, when we were finally in the same cell, there's times we laughed like we've never laughed before. Um, of I'll course. sit and, and, and admit that's absolutely not really true. I feel like if you're going to be the kind of person who strives for an exceptional life, which is what I am, I think I'd be a coward if I said I want an exceptional life, but I only want it to be exceptional in a good way. I don't think that's true. Mm. I want an exceptional life. And exceptional means mm. away from the... That's deep. Um, and I get it. If everything in your life is perfect, um, how do you grow in that environment? You accept the environment. Everything's beautiful, right? And I think in that type of environment, you take things for granted. Whereas when you get that, that struggle in your life, it makes you realize how good things were. So that, that, I, at least that's my interpretation of what he's saying. The norm and away from the norm means flying your Bugatti on a jet to Dubai and taking your own plane to meet it there. And it also means a Romanian dungeon <laughs> with cockroaches on New Year's Eve. They're both exceptional experiences. And the times I was with my brother and it was just him and I, we truly had some genuine days where we laughed like we always laugh. Mm -hmm. Me and him laugh and have fun on a private jet and we laughed and had fun in a Romanian prison cell because that's just who we are. And I also have to give my brother some credit while we're here. I would like to state that I absolutely genuinely believe I have the best brother in the world. And I'll tell you why. I always knew I had the best brother in the world, but he proved it in jail. And I'll tell you why. My brother was put in jail for being my brother. He hasn't said any videos. That's cold right there, right? <laughs> I don't know what the charges against his brother were, but um, 
I do think that this one here out of the two brothers is the one that was the target. And, you know, when we're talking about other countries, what we know about the law here is completely irrelevant to there. When you're dealing with these these former USSR satellite countries, um, their judicial their judicial system isn't uh, as forgiving as ours. And 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 a lot of people say, "What do you mean forgiving?" Believe me, we are guaranteed certain things, even when even when accused of the worst crimes in America, we are still given certain protections that other countries will not give their citizenry. So. He hasn't said anything on the internet. He hasn't said any of the things I've supposedly said. He's never, the Matrix isn't attacking him. The BBC doesn't print about him, nothing. Why was Tristan Tate in jail? Because it's Tate brothers. So they just took him and threw him in a cell. Mm. Now what's interesting is, when I got out of jail, so many people near me got heat. All business partners got heat with the tax. They got hit with like a tax paperwork and uh, they were calling everyone who's ever known me and ex-girlfriends got heat and all these people got heat. And some people complained, some people didn't. But some people were like, oh, since you've been in jail, it's been so stressful for me. The media's outside my house. I'm like, stressful for you? I was in jail. What do you want me to do? And people were complaining at me. And as these people started to complain, I sat there, I said to Tristan, you got thrown in jail purely for being my brother and never for a fraction of a second did you even moan? It's his brother though, right? He's like, fuck it, I'm riding with you. Unfortunately, there are families that won't do that. But uh, I'm sure this deepened their bond. You can't, you know, you can't sit in a cell like that. And if you're both falsely ac accused and you both rode that together, man, that's that's a bond. That's... A whole different level of brotherly, brotherly love right there. Didn't even, not even for a fraction of a second did he say, oh, they only put me here because of you. Why am I here? I, I'm innocent. This has nothing to do with me. Nothing. In fact, he said the absolute opposite. He said, I am so glad I went to jail with you. Mm -hmm. I would be furious if they sent you here by yourself. If they're going to lock you up, they better lock me up. And there was a time, about two months in, because there's less media pressure on Tristan, they were talking about releasing Tristan first. And he was saying, no, I won't leave without Andrew. Going down with the ship. I won't leave unless my brother leaves. Wow. I won't leave. And he was telling the guards, I won't leave. Keep me here. I'm not leaving. And they said, the judge says you have to leave, you have to leave. He goes, then I'll stand outside the gate. I'll sleep outside. I ain't leaving this jail. And our lawyer said, well, we can make an appeal to just release you because there's less media scrutiny around you. And Tristan's like, no, Andrew's in jail, I'm in jail refused to leave he was and that's strange because you would think that the i know how i know how our system is here i think that if that happened here um they would probably try to say oh wait a minute maybe there's some weakness there if we separate them let one go feed the other one some bullshit that he's cooperating you know that's how they work over here uh, but I guess in Romania, you can say, nah, I'm not ready to go. And they're like, okay, stay there. <laughs> Adamant he had to stay. That's a brother for me. And it was the same for me. I said to Tristan, if they came into me and said, Andrew, go home, I'd be like, no, no way. If Tristan's in jail, I'm in jail. We're in jail together. He never for a second complained, never bitched, never moaned. And he was only in jail for being my brother. And then I come out and there's other people. Oh, they sent me a piece of paper, blah, blah, blah. You're, you're moaning? It's unbelievable. You truly learn, like I said, jail confirms everything you already knew about the world, and you truly learn who's on your side and who isn't. And that's good to learn, but it's, it's actually crazy. The, also, the, the larger psychological analysis of it all, everyone lives inside their own minds, right? So it, it's kind of crazy. I came out of jail, and the, some of the first messages I got from people was them complaining about the problems me being in jail had given, like, you think that wouldn't happen, right? You think, oh, you come out of jail, people would be like, oh, are you okay? They're like, oh, you're okay? You're out now? Okay, yeah, well, listen, Mo. You'd be amazed. You'd be amazed. And I'm like, I was in jail. What do you want me to do? Yeah, that sounds unfortunate. I was in your jail cell. What do you want me to do about it? It's kind of crazy how much. All right. I wish I knew, because this part, I'm sure we're not. Let's, let's skip a little bit and see what he's talking about. My role is to be concerned and to panic. Not panic, that's the wrong word. I never panic. My role Ugh. is to be concerned and try and fix the problem. I'm in jail, pacing up and down. How do we get out? 
And Tristan's role is to not care. And together, that helps us achieve the objective best. Because when we really need to get out, I'm in charge. Just, his, I, his, job, his role is to not care. Sometimes, when it was... When it, I know what. I know. I mean, I know what. I know one thing. So he said his job was to figure out how to get them out. And his brother's job was to not give a damn. Um, wow. Let me break the news. Whether your brother gave a damn or not, or whether you were trying to figure it out or not, your lawyers got to do it. And the systems got to accept it. So, damn it. Excuse me. Ah, oh, man. Come on. There we go. My bad. Getting a bunch of phone calls. But, uh, I mean, I get trying to... Okay, man, how do I do this? Boom, boom, boom. But in another country... Like, I knew when I got busted for my case, when I got busted the last time for that murder, I knew I did it. I knew I was done. So I wasn't pacing, wondering, how am I going to get out of this? It was, when am I going to hit the joint? And how much time am I going to take? I don't know what it's like to go to prison, go to jail for something that I didn't do and something that was fabricated. And that's what these two were dealing with. So, But it is funny for him to say my job was to figure it out and my brother's job was to just not give a fuck. You, I don't think that's possible in prison. You got to give a fuck. You're in jail. It was at the height of frustration. I needed his superpower. Tristan's superpower. And this oh, is shit. his superpower for life. Oh. Is he is the master of not giving a fuck. We would go to court. We would go to court. Imagine this. You're in jail, right? Weekends were the worst. Because the TV was worse on weekends for some reason. Like you had, you had like three channels. And the TV, the weekends were the worst. And you could hear out the window everyone having fun. I hated weekends. So on a Friday would roll around, I'd say, okay, Tristan, we just have to zen away the weekend. And on Monday, there's court. We just have to zen away the weekend. So for the weekend, we just sit there staring at the wall. Intrusive thoughts, can't sleep, all those things you're trying to get out your brain, just sitting in silence because the room's tapped, just staring at the wall, just staring at the wall. And you think Monday would never come. And Monday would eventually come, right? Or Sunday night comes, and 8 a.m. on Monday, they're gonna take you to court, and they might let you go home. They might let you go home, you've done nothing. This person in this room can decide if you go home. And it's Sunday night and you can't sleep and you're awake all night long. There's no clock, but you just, you just the seconds feel like hours. You're just sitting there. Eventually, AM comes, put you in handcuffs, walk you to the court. You walk in there. I you know what? I have to take that back. I have been in jail um, for something I didn't do in, in juvenile hall. So as I'm listening to him, it reminds me of that when he said, you have court coming up. <clears throat> and you're you're hoping or you're wondering is this the time they cut me loose so i do remember that but that was i mean as a little kid in juvenile hall but it is uh it is a fucked up feeling to go before someone who doesn't know you who only knows what the prosecution has to say about you and the judge knows a lot of that is just to trump stuff up, you know, as trial comes or whatever, as discovery comes. I don't even know whether if they have discovery, then things will get whittled away or things will get added or or amended. But uh, I don't want to go too long into this. Right. I just wanted to get a glimpse of what it did to him. And obviously, uh, first of all, I let him uh, grow his hair out because <laughs> he never would have did that out here because, you know, he, he he's he's very thinning. So but anyways, the better thing is, is it it allowed him to build a stronger bond with his brother and it gave them both time to get a better understanding of who they are as individuals. And believe it or not, man, I will say that jail can be a blessing when you have that much time on your hands you know they say that what is it an idle mind is a devil's playground and it is so when he was talking about hating jail on on the weekends i did too right but 
I grew up in the system. This dude held his ground, held his mud. And uh, I'm sure got developed more determination to get more money, to impact more people, to speak louder and to speak more. So if they thought break, uh, prison was going to break him, there you go. Because he's everywhere right now. He's on fire. Uh, he better never go back to, what, what was it, Romania? He better stick to the UK and the US. So I'm going to go ahead and bring this one to a close. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you're interested in what else he has to say, do me a favor. Go check out uh, Valuetainment. Scroll through. Subscribe. There's a lot of good stuff on this channel, man, especially those of you that are interested in learning about money and investing, uh, how to sell, you know, a lot of stuff like that, stuff that will give you um, an edge in different areas that you may not um, be very well aware of. Check them out, man. With that said, everybody, please be safe, be smart, and tell the ones you love that you love them. I'm out.